Today we're going to talk about interfaces, ranging from typical interfaces to, wait, that's an interface? But what is an interface? Short answer, it's the method through which people or systems interact and connect with other persons or devices. And interface design is the creation of said interface with regard to certain factors in mind to increase usability of the interface. To help you understand some of these factors, and some of the varied interfaces involved, I've chosen a handful here to discuss with you. Here I've chosen my portfolio website, chosen for its clear communication via a simple, easy to read interface and analogous color scheme. The text is clearly written using a sans serif typeface, which helps the reader. Meanwhile, the analogous color scheme of gray tones makes the images and video, which are to be the focus of the portfolio site, stand out all the more crisply, drawing the viewer's eye. Contact information is easy to locate, and the video content is clearly labeled as playable content by use of the play icon over the thumbnail images. Only the most relevant text is in black for easy reading. The rest is in gray so that while legible, it is clearly not meant to be the focus of the page. <laughs> now that's funny. Links along the top allow the user to easily see and visit skill sets that are represented in the portfolio. Due to the nature of the portfolio skill set being that of graphic or image-based skills, the use of text is kept to a minimum throughout the page. Angry birds. Yes, they're angry and they're birds and you know them well. What you may not have considered though is that the incredibly easy to use and responsive interface has a lot to do with the game's overwhelming success. That and tireless marketing. While the most familiar aspect of the interface is its use on mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets, I'm using the console version here so you can see the game without my fat fingers getting in the way. As you can see, all interactivity with the game is completed using your finger. Simply touch the bird with your finger, pull back and release. Certain birds have special abilities triggered by tapping the screen with your finger. These new birds' abilities are easily explained by a simple image with no need for language to understand. Put simply, this is an interface that can be picked up and used efficiently and effectively by virtually anyone. Eh, anyone with hands, that is. Crook's first law of usability implies the need for an interface to not cause the user to have to think. For example, with a web page, it should be self-evident, obvious, and self-explanatory. However, in certain cases, an interface is designed with uh, in mind to make the user think, such as with puzzles, games, or even an artwork. In the case of symbolism in artwork, the direct meaning is often intentionally elusive to the viewer. The interface, that is the picture or sculpture, is designed to intrigue the viewer and give them pause as they discern and contemplate the meaning of corresponding symbols with relation to each other in the context of the particular piece. Take for example Dr. Seuss's book, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. The cover alone tells a remarkable tale for those who know what to look for symbolically. Mountain peaks, symbolizing obstacles leading to goals, dominated the quote-unquote secret art of Dr. Seuss, and was a symbol that came to play heavily even in his books. So much so that it was the dominant theme in his final book, Oh, the Places You Will Go. The use of mountains on the cover here is more subtle, taking the form of waves. Another relevant theme that occupied much of Dr. Seuss's work was the saying, parents give us roots to grow and wings to fly away. In understanding the book's cover, much like figuring out a maze, you simply start at the end, so to speak. The blue fish and red fish represent the father and mother figures, while the two fish, both of whom are green, represent the parents at a younger age. Note not only the position, but the color of these two. Green, representative of life and fertility, and the position is directly expressive of procreation. Yes, you heard me correctly. And lastly, the one fish, tabla rasa, or blank slate, the offspring of these two's union. 
Now, note at the bottom of the cover, down the wave, a little past the bluefish's fingers. A distinctive S-shape, almost resembling a diving board, juts out over this first small wave or obstacle. Here's where the child will face their first obstacle, powered only by their parents' previous instruction. I.e., roots to grow and wings to fly. And if you want to find out if the one fish is successful, one need only turn to the first page of the book. As an interface, this leaves much guesswork to be made by the user. However, it also permits a far more intimate and ultimately unique connection between the interface and the user. The QWERTY keyboard. It's an interface that's been around for over 150 years. Its origins, as far as key placement, have been the topic of debate for many years. Some believe that Christopher Latham Scholes intentionally spaced commonly paired characters far from each other in order to reduce typewriter jams. Others refute that, claiming the telegraph machines used to translate Morse code used a QWERTY keyboard design. Whichever the case may be, while it is not necessarily the best layout for a keyboard in all instances, for example, typing with your thumbs, it did help to produce icons over the years that helped to make key recognition instantaneous. For example, the backspace arrow, the tab symbol, and the enter button, just to name a few. And while the keyboard layout will no doubt change over time, the established key symbols are unlikely to change much. Unlike some interfaces, the QWERTY keyboard as an interface makes use of not only easily recognized symbol and character, but more importantly, kinesthesia, or muscle memory. The importance of this in an interface is that after long enough familiarization with the interface's design, one is able to operate it with seldom need to ever look at the interface. Obviously, there are many inherent benefits to this, not the least of which is user efficiency. And lastly, YouTube annotations. For those unfamiliar with them, they appear at certain points in YouTube videos, usually the end, and allow the viewer clickable options within the video. These can link to numerous things from associated websites to other videos. While YouTube created this primarily as a mostly utilitarian tool to keep viewers watching, the video uploaders have begun to use it in an entirely new fashion, that of interactive videos. Much like a choose-your-own-adventure, content creators use annotations to give the viewer the power to influence the outcome of the video or play games similar to shooters. This new style of interactive video turns the annotations into an interface with which to better interact with and entertain one's target audience. And maybe even pick up a few more subscribers in the process. So, as you can see, the face of interface design is an ever-changing and evolving thing. Not unlike the world. What? You thought I'd let this end without giving you a taste of annotations? Not a chance. In fact, let me give you a chance to affect my grade. Choose it even. Heck, you'll be helping out Carolyn along the way, make her job a lot easier. So all you have to do is choose one of these grades down here, and I'll keep a tally of views from the different videos, and then I'll know exactly what my grade should be. So, yeah, just choose any one of them. I won't look. Go ahead. I'm not looking. My eyes are closed. This one. Pick this one. Come on. Don't be shy. I can't see which one you're getting. Yeah, just pick any of them. Any of them. Yep, go ahead. I'm waiting. I got all day. Yep. Seriously, you still haven't picked? Hello. Right here. It should be easy, it should be obvious. Okay, fine, pick one of these other ones. Follow the letters. Okay, fine. Fine. Be the slacker that doesn't help her out with this grading. It's that simple. Just go and push it. 
Whatever. You know what? I got something for you. It's right here. Yeah. See this? Last chance. Choose. Choose. Yeah. Choose. 